Hey guys, one like equals one prayer. Pray for this video, please. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about. So hey everyone, welcome back. I'm guessing from the title you've once again deduced the nature and the thrust, the main idea behind this video. It's why I left Facebook. Now before I dig into my little anecdote followed by the main point that I've got to make here, I wanted to say, amidst all of the new revelations regarding your personal data that uh, Zuck and co have been you know, using in nefarious sorts of purposes and the fact that other companies have been harvesting personal data to create sort of digital profiles of you so that they could either sell you shit or convince you how to vote or all of these other things if you are somebody who is genuinely surprised about the fact that these companies have been doing that I'm sorry I don't really have a term to describe how simple that mindset really is. Um, if, if you didn't think that this was happening beforehand, and now you're flabbergasted to discover that these companies that you for some reason trusted um, have been betraying your trust by misusing your personal information. I don't know what to tell you, bud. I'm sorry. Um, maybe get some blocks, some crayons, some stuffies and a blankie and just, you know, sort of revert back to this simple lifestyle that the simple mindset which led you to believe this unfortunate uh, misstep uh, brought you to. It's just sort of the way of things. If you use Google at all, you need to understand that they've been harvesting this shit the entire time. If you don't understand that much, again, I'm, I don't know if I have a term for that kind of simple. But all the same, why I left Facebook, now it actually has a considerably less to do with the modern scandal about the use of the data, the harvesting and all of that, because I kind of assumed all of that was going on and anybody with a brain in their heads probably assumed that beforehand too. But sort of as a primer to this, let me offer you this. Now I, at almost 35 years old now, was myself sort of an early adopter of social media. Now I used to chat in the old Yahoo chats <laughs> back in the day. That was a wild time. But even after that, I was actually, I remember there was a time I used Friendster, you know? I actually used Friendster. I actually got laid off of Friendster now that I think about it. And that, I can kind of understand after that why it was perhaps I had somewhat of a positive mindset in regards to what social media was and could be. Now, with this, with all of this being the case, um, well, this was back during a time in which online dating itself, right, was sort of, um, it really wasn't looked on too fondly. It was sort of the last bastion of the, of the virgin loser. Um, and that, that's what it was. And, uh, for me, it kind of worked, so I didn't feel too bad. Now, after Friendster went down, MySpace popped up, and I remember finding out about MySpace simply because a co-worker of mine at Radio Shack at the time, right, uh, was using it, and she was hmm, pretty smoking hot, I'll be honest, and to think, ooh, smoking hot girls who look for validation are on the internet on this particular website, I should go check that out. Ah. Now, it was funny with MySpace, actually, because in MySpace, there were um, message boards, forums, basically, for people to discuss anything from politics to television, and so on. Now, I used to haunt the political, the US and the world politics forums, and I did so for a number of years, to a point in which all of the regulars who went there, myself included, sort of formed an actual community. Even those of us who bitterly disagreed with one another on all kinds of topics were friends, more or less, by the end of the thing. Now, I've met multiple members of this forum, remain friends with them to this day. And in fact, even my old roommate from New Orleans, who I oftentimes uh, speak about on this channel and elsewhere, um, he and I met via this political debate forum. Um, initially started out as a Yankee and a Southerner arguing over the Civil War. Now, it was funny because when I finally made it down to New Orleans for the first time and I met this old friend of mine who had known for the better part of a decade, honestly, it was kind of funny to say, hello, old friend, it's nice to finally meet you. 
Now, this was long before Facebook. This was pretty well, not that particular time, but the use of MySpace in those days. It was before Facebook. It was before uh, I'd come to YouTube, before I'd ever tweeted at all. And, um, and it was an interesting time, an interesting place. Met a lot of friends, met a lot of girlfriends and such. And social media throughout at least my own history, my own adult history, has, has, has been an interesting and sort of integral part of my life. When I traveled even, it was using uh, Facebook or MySpace prior to that, w through which I was able to actually sort of establish um, contacts with friends in given places so we could meet up or sometimes I'd have a place to stay. Now, beyond all this, why it is that I deleted Facebook recently actually has a lot more to do with that personal life nature than it does anything regarding the scandals about Zuckerberg harvesting information or anybody else using that sort of thing. It actually has more to do with the realization that I had, which came about mostly after I deleted it. Now, once I deactivated my account and I deleted the app from my phone, I took Messenger off and all of that, I noticed that there was a two-week period in which I was routinely looking back to my phone. I was, I was always opening the browser, expecting to go to Facebook and talk to friends and see what the posts are and who had what for breakfast and what's the big event this week, yada, yada, yada. Now, in the course of my sort of um, self-rehabilitation after the unfortunate and recent breakup um, that I had, it was this constant buzz of social media noise which drove me out of my fucking mind. I mean, flat out, just the constant invites to events that I had no interest or ability to attend, sometimes on the opposite side of the country, just because somebody was going to add every one of their friends to it and invite every one of their friends to this big event. I couldn't make it, and it got annoying. But more than that, though, too, I also started thinking more about what it was I was seeing being presented by the friends that I had. Now... If it wasn't just some normal, everyday, this is what I had for breakfast or check out my new haircut kind of thing, I also started noticing there was a increasing numbers of these posts, these weird sort of image macro meme posts, which would say things like, hey, tag me and tell me about the first time we met, or tag a picture that has something to do with our friendship, blah, blah, blah. And they they just oozed this obvious desperation for contact and validation, which the more I looked at, the more revolting I found it. Now, we always hear about how this technology, these platforms, these mediums, they continually uh, bring us closer together, right? We're hearing that all the time. Now, if you're talking about a friend who perhaps lives on the opposite side of the country or in another country, yeah, you're probably closer with that person being able to chat with them on the regular via Facebook Messenger than you would be otherwise in the real world. But at the same time, the actual... IRL friends that you have, that you're connected with, I think in, in a large way it really does take a lot out of that relationship. Now, one of the ways in which I noticed this was after I deleted Facebook, a good friend of mine, Jetty Lead, you know, uh, my audio engineer, bassist, musician friend. Now, this is a guy who, I've, throw, at least most of the time I've known him, has worn his hair very long. You know, that rocker style. It was interesting because just a few days ago he came by fresh haircut. I mean, it's short for him, but it's, it's, it's a short, manageable haircut. Um, in addition to that, he'd actually interviewed that day for a banging new job. And um, I wish him the best in all of that. But it was an interesting thing because I realized since adopting social media, since adopting Facebook and connecting with all of my friends via this medium, this conversation, which he and I had and which we caught up, in which we talked about what was going on in our lives. And we enlightened one another as to the goings-on in our lives in a fresh and real way. Something that would not happen were I still connected to social media. I found that really so refreshing and engaging and worthwhile that it caused me to wonder why it was that I wasted so much time maintaining fake relations with people via social media when there was so much genuine and authentic realness that was being glossed over. This is part of sort of what I mentioned in a previous video about why social media is an antisocial tool. It has stripped us of our abilities to miss people. 
This has stripped us of our abilities to have conversations in which we catch up with one another. Because you don't need to catch up with a person if you know everything that's going on with them. If your friend with long rocker hair suddenly gets a haircut and they post it to Facebook, you already know there's no surprise outside of the post that you see scrolling along on your screen. At the same time, if they're going for a new job, if they've fallen in love somehow, if they've had a breakup, if they've discovered some new passion or hobby, none of this is surprising. None of this is even anything that they're able to tell you directly in conversation like human beings are supposed to be having. Instead, it's just another news item on your news feed. It blends in with the rest of the inane shit that goes on on social media with all of the cat posts and cute animals and all of the shitty five-week-old memes and image macros that come off of Reddit and Twitter and finally filter into someone's Facebook feed. Additionally, when it comes to political positions, so many arguments can end friendships, lifelong friendships sometimes, if you're arguing about things like politics or religion over social media. And I think a big piece of this comes back to the fact that when you're sitting at a keyboard typing, even if it's to your friends, even if it's to your loved ones, the people who are close to you, you are still more inclined in this particular medium and environment to say things you might not otherwise say simply because you have that wall in front of you, that little safety net, that shield which prevents you from actually sort of taking the time to wonder if it's something you really need to say. If you're sitting across from someone, looking them dead in the eye, and you're about to say something that you know will deeply, deeply anger or offend them, you might actually check yourself. You might take a, a more diplomatic route. You might actually reconsider your position, or you might just reconsider the ways in which you'll say it. Because these are the cues that human beings give one another when they're face-to-face -face and in person. And these are things which I feel largely Facebook as a medium and social media as a whole has been continually stripping us of. Now, I kind of worry sometimes when we think about questions about how it is social media has affected human interaction. And if it affects human interaction, being that we are naturally social creatures, that our, our sociality and our social lives are integral parts of who and what we are as people, I have to wonder if, especially as a generation grows up with these mediums being the standard par for course means of communicating with their friends, if perhaps the ultimate core value of the friendships and relationships which we claim to value via these mediums isn't being itself eroded, and by virtue of such, if perhaps aspects of our humanity at large aren't being eroded in the process. I'm not really a big fan of social media anymore. I do kind of miss Facebook because there are people who live far away from me who I'm no longer able to talk to quite as easily. But all in all, I do find that when I meet a friend in real life who is surprised that I don't know a certain thing about the goings-on in their lives until they remember I don't use Facebook anymore, and then they need to tell me themselves, that they need to explain to me what's going on, and then I need to respond in kind in real time, that... The fact that this almost seems alien to some people, and the fact that it, the notions of having to tell your friend what's going on with you and your life and your loved ones and your family and your friends and all of that, the fact that that is becoming itself a lost art, it leaves me wondering if perhaps we are not genuinely losing more than we gain by virtue of constant connection to the people that we claim to be friends with. Now, it's often said that the human mind, uh, the human animal itself, can only handle so many interconnections. So you have to wonder, in an era in which people are actually measuring their social value or their social health by the numbers of Facebook friends, when odds are good they've never actually met half of them and probably never spoken to a good portion of them, if, well, if perhaps the very nature of friendship, kinship, and camaraderie itself isn't being ground down to dust as we continually look for more likes and prayers and retweets and reposts and all of these things. I think more is lost than gained by virtue of mediums like Facebook. And now to find out, too, that they are basically just uh, farms in which companies and governments and other institutions and organizations can compile your data to comprise digital 
portraits of you that they can sort of spin and analyze and consider so as to find the best ways to manipulate you into buying shit or voting for shit or so on and so forth. I have to wonder if perhaps even more than simply being a net negative in our lives, if there's not actually something that's intrinsically fucking evil about this medium. Now, I've been off Twitter, not entirely, but I've been stepping back, not spending my days tweeting endlessly as I used to. And this actually does kind of remind me of a conversation I once had with Sargon shortly after he was booted off of Twitter and didn't fight to try and come back. The reason he did so is because he even said that he found it to be such a time suck, such a useless thing all in all, that he was able to get far more done with his day and his time since he was away from it. I likewise have found that without Facebook and without the, uh, the, the compulsive habitual tweeting that I used to do, I myself am able to get more work done. And in addition to getting more work done, I've also been able to reevaluate what the values I place in the relations that I have really are, to determine what is a worthwhile relationship versus that which is just meaningless online internet tripe. And it's been, well, it's been enlightening. I'll say that much. I would encourage you, if you were a Facebook user yourself and you're not just jumping ship because of the recent scandals, if you've been mulling it over, considering, thinking, pondering the notion of getting rid of that medium, of cutting it out of your life and going back to a more primitive form of interrelation and communication, I would say take that. Take that chance right now. Go to your Facebook, deactivate it. Take the apps off of your phone and ignore them. And then force yourself for two weeks straight not to pay any attention to it whatsoever and retrain yourself into a, an older mode of communication. Even if it's just something as simple and even modern as texting your friends or meeting up with them. Ignore the social media buzz just for two weeks. See how, see how you feel, see what it does to your relations, and, and see how it feels once again to catch up with somebody who's a good friend of yours, who you're not maybe all up uh, on, in terms of what their business has been, and find out what it feels like once again to have that conversation, to have them tell you what's going on with them, and then for you to explore that with them in real time, in real conversation. I think you'd be really surprised by what you find, because in addition to... Uh, you know, sort of casting light on perhaps the nature of our modern social environments and the way social media plays into it. I think it might also show you something about yourself. You might be surprised. Maybe you've been running too fast and spending too much time caring about stupid shit that really didn't matter and not taking enough time to really think about what it is that matters. So, that being said, thank you all for holding on there. I'm, I appreciate you waiting for this video. Really wasn't too keen on what I was coming up with yesterday. Uh, we'll be back in the next couple of days with some more videos. And, of course, as always, catch me Thursday nights over on Twitch at the Midweek Saints show. And then every Sunday night over at YouTube Saints, Jeff Holidays and I have ourselves a good old-fashioned late-night style show. And it's a lot of fun. Otherwise, too, links down below if you want to support the channel. There's ways to do it down below. Other things that I do also contain down below. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Are you somebody who's abandoned social media yourself? And if you did, what did you find from it? Have you been considering such but not really sure about doing it? And if not, what's holding you back? So, again, look forward to your comments. I hope in two weeks' time as well, to, to get some feedback as to what the experience of unplugging in that way has been, because the simple fact that people regard getting off of Facebook as going off the grid these days tells us a lot about exactly where it is our society is in general, and what it is we value in terms of our social interactions. So, cheers and thanks for sticking around. Hope you enjoy the little green screen. I got good green screen stuff going on. That's good fun. And I'll um, see you next time. So, please kindly show yourself out. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating. If you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make
make thoughts rain, if you can meet with triumph and disaster, and treat those two impostors just the same, if you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves, to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to, broken, and stoop, and build them up with worn out tools, if you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss, and lose and start again your beginnings, and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sing to serve your turn long after they're gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on.